You said that Putin has miscalculated. Does that therefore <laughs> suggest that he might get more desperate and resort to extreme measures such as biological, chemical, or even nuclear weapons? It's a really large question, isn't it? Um, and I think what I worry about is his isolation, uh, which is something with respect to, if you compare, for example, to Soviet era leaders, you didn't see quite this from them. And I think the pandemic in a funny way has actually made this worse. And so my concern is that, yes, it's possible that if he gets desperate enough, as his back is really to the wall, as it arguably is, um, that he could, he could resort uh, to the use uh, of even greater firepower than he's already used, potentially, I suppose, resort to the weapons that you're describing. Uh, I don't think we're there yet. Uh, I'm not convinced by those who say that he is acting irrationally here. I think from his perspective, though there are these miscalculations, which we could discuss on the military side, political, diplomatic, uh, I don't know that I'm prepared to go quite that far yet. Professor, good morning, Nathan. We're running this conversation. Uh, you know, a lot of reports, of course, have indicated, and U.S. intelligence has, of course, uh, shared uh, the fact that uh, uh, Russian troops and, uh, and just this whole plan of the invasion has missed a lot of its targets. Uh, do you think that would embolden uh, President Putin to go harder, get more aggressive, or look for a diplomatic solution? Because, you know, it comes at a cost, uh, which, of course, it's, you know, will backfire it's, it's at some point huge... in time. It's a huge question. Uh, part of me would want to say that I'm not sure that there is all that much he can do, uh, even with his the, the immense firepower at his disposal. Uh, obviously, the Russians have uh, more of it than the Ukrainians have. But when you bring in NATO, uh, he's got to feel he's got to feel the pressure that he's now under because this has become a much more difficult operation than he thought. He imagined that this would take maybe 72 hours that Russian troops would be welcomed in many parts of Ukraine. Of course, that hasn't happened. So it would seem to me, um, if I were advising him, and again, he's got very few people, it seems, around him other than yes men, but I certainly would be saying to him, look, um, you've got to look for a diplomatic settlement here, and settlement here. You've got to try to get something from this. We think you can with a diplomatic settlement, uh, Mr. Putin. Uh, will, he, will he take that course? That remains to be seen. But I think it's by far his best option. This is not looking good for him militarily.